You're listening to Nightlight. Hello and welcome once again to Nightlight. My guest on the show today is Kathy Gare, author of Look and Feel 10 Years Younger in the Next 10 Days, Affordable Secrets for Natural Beauty and Healthy Energy. Kathy and her husband Peter live in rural New Zealand and I'm speaking to her over Skype. Thanks for joining us on the show, Kathy. It's so great to be here. Thanks so much for having me on your show. Nightlight's interview of the week. You know, it's amazing looking at you now. You hardly look any different as when I first met you over 40 years ago. Thank you, Kathy, for coming onto the show to share some of your secrets. But first, tell us about your book. How did it come about? This book is the result of so many people asking me, how do you look so good for your age? You do. I wrote the book when I was 61. When I would meet people, many people thought I was still in my 40s. This is a wonderful compliment. Now it's seven years later, and they still think I'm in my 40s. For sure. Well, they can read my book and find out the secret. There are lots of tips and examples and stories. I think anyone can relate to it. And the action steps that I suggest are very easy to follow. It's nightlight. What a delight. The first chapter I'd like to talk about is exercise because this was sort of my epiphany about reaching a greater level of health. I'd always been a fairly good weight. I was pretty mindful of my diet. I didn't really have any health issues or breakdown issues with my body. But what really got my attention to start getting a little more serious and a little more focused about my well-being happened due to an event that took place when I was in my late 40s and I was in Japan at the time. For exercise, I was only going on a power walk. Okay. I thought that was sufficient. I got out there with my friend. The terrain of the area was, there were some hills around and uh so I was doing my cardio and getting my heart going, and I thought that that was all sufficient, and it seemed like it was. Right. I was in good health, not sick at all. But then one day after I came back from my normal exercise, the top of my leg felt a bit sore, but I didn't really think anything of it. But the next day, my left thigh was feeling really sore and I had a pain there so I didn't do any power walking that day and then the next day day two I was still having this pain and then on the third day the pain was still there so I went to the local doctor he was a muscle and bone doctor so he checked out my legs and he said well it seems like you've torn your ligament so just take it easy but what really got his attention due to him asking me to do some leg exercises for him was he said that the muscles in my thighs and in my calves and my core body he said you are not strong in these areas and if you don't start doing some exercises to get better core strength better leg strength, you're going to have problems in your 50s and you will really be in trouble when you get in your 60s. Wow. He said the muscles in your legs are not what they should be for your age. You need to start doing some exercises and start working on getting more muscle tone and muscle strength. Right. So he gave me an exercise to do, which you'll find at the bottom of page 44. And with this information, I went home and I was quite stunned. And then I realized, hey, I'm going to have to start looking at this really seriously. So I started researching different exercises. I started going to a local gym there. I was working on getting better upper body strength and better leg strength with lunges, the plank, building up to using some weights. And I have pictures in, in my book on the chapter and exercise that show some of the basic exercises that I do. Now, at the time that I wrote the book, I was going to the gym five days a week for about an hour, an hour and a half every day. And so I still keep up my exercise routine. You don't need to 
go to a gym. So I do the exercises at home. And this is the thing. I realized that when I was younger, this type of exercise was just sort of optional. But, but now that I was in my late 40s, I realized that this type of exercise regimen was going to have to be mandatory for me. That I couldn't just rely on the good health that I already had. I was going to have to start preparing for the future. And one of my favorite quotes is, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? <laughs> I really like that one. It's a good question. It's a good question to ask ourselves. Kathy, if people listening to this are already in their late 60s, for instance, is it already too late for them to start exercising and building up their core strength? What does it mean, actually, core strength? Your core is your torso the midsection of your body. It includes all the muscles in the back, in the front, and on the sides. And by strengthening your core, this helps to protect the vital organs of your body. You can work on arm strength, you can work on leg strength, you can try to work on getting bigger biceps, but it's more important to strengthen your core first. Okay. 80% of your total health scorecard has to do with your gut health. Wow. And not only microbial, not not just, you know, how your intestines are operating, but also the muscles around it. The exercise that he the doctor gave me on that very day when I met him, which is on page forty four, that exercise is very easy to do, but it is very effective. And uh, no, it's never too late to start exercising. It's, it's not too late. And how long every day would you recommend that people exercise for? I would recommend for someone who's never exercised like this before, that they start with a goal of three to five minutes. Okay. Just take it easy, slow and steady. Once you feel comfortable with five minutes, then go for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh -huh. You have to do what's comfortable for you. Once you've made more progress, then you can go on to 20 to 30 minutes. It's all about listening to your body and deciding for yourself what kind of goal you want to have as far as your fitness is concerned. Nightlight. What a delight. Kathy, would you say that a power walk is sufficient to get enough aerobic exercise or is it better to jog? Well, I'm going to answer that question from a personal perspective. I've decided that jogging is really not the best fit for me. From the research that I've done, jogging can have an adverse effect on a woman's body, their womanly parts, the joints, your facial muscles, all the aspects of our body that we're trying to preserve. So I have found that power walking is just fine for me and is sufficient. And I challenge you to go on a power walk with me and try to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So jogging and power walking have about the same benefits. I, I think what the journey is, is, is learning how to listen. And I know this sounds kind of trite because people say it, but it really is about listening to your body. Right. In my book, I talk about the oxidization process of your body, because we are at the age where we are oxidizing, we are rusting. Oh, gosh. So anything that you can do to help relieve the stress of that oxidization of your body is going to be really helpful. And even your digestive system is part of oxidization. So when you eat foods that are hard to digest or you're doing stuff to your gut that's making it unhappy, and you can tell when your gut is unhappy, that's a really important part of the whole mechanism. Right. Yes, our spirits are really important. Our heart's super important in our mind. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. We have to take care of our core, of our abdomen, of our gut. Kathy, I know my wife, Sunshine, uses lots of different kinds of weights for different kinds of resistance exercises. Do you recommend using weights? Oh, definitely. See, that's what I had never used weights before. 
And when I had this event in Japan and I found out that my muscles were not what they should be, uh, yeah, I started getting into weights. My weight range now, depending on how I'm using the weights for my upper body training, is anywhere between four and five. I'm not shooting for six, seven, eight, etc. because I've decided which level I think I'm comfortable with. I have a pair of weights and I can change them from four kilos to five kilos. And that's good for me. Yeah. My wife, God bless her, keeps herself extremely fit. And she works out first thing every morning online with this English girl, Lisa Marie. Would you recommend people find a good series of exercise videos that they can follow along and be trained by? Yes, yes. I think that's a really good idea. If you're not able to get a buddy that already knows about strength building exercises, yes, get online and get a trainer to help start getting you going in that direction. For me, I had not really, like I said, I was just into power walking. I didn't know anything about core body strength and and doing weights for my upper body and for my lower body. But it was really helpful to go online, get some ideas for exercises. And uh, then going to the gym, when I was able to go to the gym, I met some people there uh, who were able to give me some good ideas to mix things up. Because the thing is, you don't want to, you want to get into a routine, but you don't want to get into a rut. So. Right. So it's just good to have a, an arsenal of exercises that you can pull from to develop your routine. It's really important. Right. Yes, my wife says that you have to keep changing your exercise because once your body gets used to one exercise, then you don't benefit from it so much anymore. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She's on to it. Nightlight. You're listening to an international edition of Nightlight, shining God's love light. To the world. Now the next chapter is about water and hydration. Chapter two is the water chapter. Of course, the water of the word is the miraculous supernatural component of our life. Right. And in the physical realm, water and a daily hydration plan is absolutely vital. If you go on YouTube, you'll see my two and a half minute YouTube video called The Importance of Hydration with Kathy Gear. Okay. Poor water intake and a lack of hydration results in the deterioration of your body by speeding up the aging process. The key is don't wait until you're thirsty to drink water. Right. If you feel that you're thirsty, you are already dehydrated having lost about 1% to 2% of your body's water content. Oh, dear. <laughs> at a 3% loss, your mouth starts getting dry, and at 5%, it starts getting hard to concentrate, and your pulse and your breathing accelerates. And the possibility of death due to dehydration starts at 11%. So you can see why I'm trying to get people's attention about the importance of maintaining a deliberate drinking discipline throughout the course of the day. Yeah, so water, it's just so important. And how much water, Kathy, would you recommend drinking every day? Studies show that we lose about 2.5 liters of water a day. That equates to about eight glasses. Wow, that's a lot. But if you're doing vigorous sports and exercise and jogging, then you could be looking at about three liters of water a day. And I guess it's important to have a good drink of water first thing when you wake up in the morning. Oh, yeah, definitely. And before you go to bed at night as well. And how much should you drink? It's recommended to drink about 300 ml. This helps to hydrate your body, which has slightly dehydrated during the night. It's also recommended to drink some water before you go to sleep at night. The same amount, 300 ml, or if that's too much, try 200 mil. This helps to lubricate your body for a good night's sleep. Okay, I should start doing that. This is the thing you have to remember that you're you're just dehydrating all the time. And I presume, Kathy, when it's a hot day or you've been exercising and sweating a lot, then you need to drink even more water. Yes, 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 you do. It's 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 just so important. When you are conscious of having 
a really good water and dehydration plan, guess what happens? You're gonna look amazing because it so ties into the next chapter I want to talk about, chapter 10, and that is skin care because your skin is the largest organ of your body and your wow, skin wow. loves to be watered. People ask me, oh, what cream do you use on your face? What's your skincare product? And I just tell them it's mainly water. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, so the healthy skin cells that you see on a person, these skin cells started 30 days ago. 30 days after they started, then they come to the surface. Really? Healthy skin cells start at the bottom of your epidermis, about a third of an inch or, you know, roughly a centimeter down from the surface of your skin. And as these skin cells mature, they start getting ready to come into the world, to face the outside world. And when this starts happening, they produce a waterproof compound called keratin. Keratin is a biological wonder substance. Your body uses it to build your hair and your nails. And when your body produces fresh skin cells, these newcomers push the older skins out of the crowded neighborhood at the base of the epidermis toward the surface of the skin. This process takes anywhere from a couple of weeks to a month. Each surface skin cell lasts about 30 days on the outside, which means you get an entirely new outer skin every month. Amazing. In my book, I concentrate more about what goes into your body rather than what you put on your body. Because whatever you put in your mouth has a consequence on your skin. Okay. Good stuff in, good stuff shows up. Bad stuff in, poor looking skin. Right. I have had many of my homestays over the years who came to our home with skin problems. If they were interested in receiving my help, I was more than happy to advise them. And you can read about some of the stories from my homestays on pages 91 and 92 of my book in this chapter 10. With these homestays that came to me with their skin problems, and I would tell them, look, I'm not a licensed practitioner, I'm not a doctor, I'm, I don't have any degree in skin care, I'm just speaking from personal experience. The most surefire remedy to help clear up their skin problem was to start drinking water and hydrating, to cut out sugar as much as possible, mm -hmm. especially candy, sugary baked goods, and ice cream, and no fried foods. Okay. Those that decided they wanted to have nice looking skin, after one month, there was always a marked improvement. And by two months, it was really great to see their skin glowing. One of wow. my homestays said that her parents spent a fortune on doctor visits, drugs, creams, lotions, serums, all in an attempt to help clear up her acne, and still she had problems. But my homestay said, I didn't have to spend all that money. I just followed what you told me to do. I saved money by drinking water and not buying sugary, fatty, fried foods. There you go. Wow. So this is what I tell people. It is cheaper to be healthy than to be sick. Absolutely. Pay the farmer, not the pharmacy. You're right. It's nightlight. Kathy, can I ask you one question about fried foods? Is it okay to fry in healthy oils like coconut oil or olive or palm oil? Well, I told them to, look, if they want to get on track, let's get down to basics. So. We cut out the fried food. They would just have, you know, steamed vegetables mm -hmm. or maybe just lightly fried in olive oil. Yeah, coconut oil is good too, but still you've got to be mindful of coconut oil. It can be caloric. This is the thing. People say, oh, coconut oil is really good for you. And then, boom, and then you splurge on coconut oil. I wouldn't advise going whole hog on coconut oil, but it's definitely a much better option than... Uh, than canola oil 
or corn oil. Okay, well, that's good to know. I've read that research has shown that coconut oil is most effective when it actually replaces less healthy fats and oils in your diet, rather than being added on top of the fats and oils you're already consuming. Taking about two tablespoons daily seems to be the best strategy for optimizing health. Coconut oil is more than 80% saturated fat, which has long been associated with raising cholesterol levels. So coconut oil should not be consumed in excess. Very interesting. Well, I'm really looking forward to studying your book, Kathy, so I can learn a lot more about these details. I'm mostly so, talking uh, yeah. to people that come from, you know, these Western countries that are have lots of GMOs and cutting out deep fried food. Let's just get down to you know, steamed and using spices for flavor. They go, well, if I don't deep fry, how's it going to taste? But Peter and I are really into using herbs and spices to help flavor the foods. Mm -hmm. For many of my homestays, this was like, wow, this is amazing. You can make food stay healthy without it coming from McDonald's. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, and speaking of McDonald's, I'd just like to mention two books that have really been helpful, not only for me personally, but also in sharing my health and well-being tips with others. One of them is called Fast Food Nation, All right. What the All-American Meal is Doing to the World, and it's written by Eric Slosser. This was an international bestseller. It exposes the global love affair with fast food and the ingredients that make it so hypnotically addicting. Gosh. It just rips off the mask of its dietary deception and shockingly lays out how utterly poisonous and unethical it is. Thank God. The second one is called The Color Code, a revolutionary eating plan for optimum health. And the authors are James Joseph, Ph.D., Daniel Nadeau, M.D., and Anne Underwood. Okay. You know, we've always been told since we were kids, eat your vegetables and fruits. But this book tells you why. And I love the way that it's color-coded. Interesting. I've had many of my homestays who didn't like vegetables because they were raised on fast food or they were really spoiled and got away with not eating their veggies. Right. We've helped turn them around, and this book has really been instrumental in explaining to them why color is so good to have in your meal. Because a lot of those fast food meals, they're just brown and white, maybe with a tiny little bit of lettuce there. Right. I've loaned this book, Color Code, to many of my homestays and friends, and it's really helped in their perception of vegetables in particular. We have a guest tonight on Nightlight. The next topic I'd like to talk about is sugar. Sugar can be a really sensitive nerve for some people. Yes. And guess what? It's a sensitive nerve for me. Because <laughs> I have not just one sweet tooth, but I have several. <laughs> and I and I could eat ice cream until the cows come home. Yeah, I love sugar. But see, this is it's important to know what your weaknesses are. Yes. In this journey of getting healthier, you have to know. So, if anybody in particular is having a a problem with sugar or know any knows anybody with a problem with sugar, I would recommend reading chapter 7 which is the sugar chapter, reading it slowly and reading it often. Sugar and artificial sweeteners are highly acidic foods. Yes. Which is one of the reasons that sugar is linked to so many health ailments. Absolutely. Sugar, and that includes the sugar in alcohol, breaks down collagen. That's the springy substance that makes your skin look plump youthful and lifted. Right. Sugar causes cross-linking of collagen, resulting in the skin stiffening and sagging. So I just mentioned that I love ice cream. Yes, and I still do, even though I wrote this book. It, <laughs> it didn't go away. I didn't get delivered from 
a craving for ice cream, but I have developed a very strict and strong no to the seduction of iced sugar and cream. Right. And I keep it in a very, very, very small space. Good for you. No, I just have it for like birthdays or some other holiday, but it stays in that space and I'm very, very strict about it. It see it's not that I was delivered from my craving, but I got stronger in my discipline. So usually if, if I want to have a sweet treat, I opt for some fresh fruit or some dried fruit or some yogurt with a little drizzle of honey or date syrup. Those are good alternatives. Yes, Kathy, I got sugar from my diet about four years ago now, and it was really hard at first not to have any sugar in my coffee and not to eat cake or sweets. But it didn't take long, actually, to get unaddicted from it. And now when I eat anything sweet, like a piece of cake at one of my children's birthdays or something, it tastes almost too sweet, and I can only stand to eat a small piece of it. Yeah, that that's the thing. Like... Once you cut it out or cut it down, then when you do have it, you're satisfied with just a much smaller amount than you would have had before. That's a great feeling. It is. In saying on my book to look and feel 10 years younger in the next 10 days, this is actually very biblical because as we know, when Daniel and his mates were in Babylon and they were asked to go through this training process to become super smart men in the king's council. And they were asked to go through the training process and they were offered all these meats and delicacies on the king's table. And as we know, Daniel and his buddies, they declined from having that type of diet. And Daniel counterproposed and said that they will just have a diet of water and a pulse diet, which is chickpeas, lentils, vegetables. And how long were they on this diet? 10 days. 10 days. And we also know from that story that after 10 days, they were brought before the king and Daniel and his friends were in much better nick than the other guys that had been eating meat and drinking for those 10 days. Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to mention there, see, that in 10 days, if you follow the steps that I'm suggesting in my book, you will start noticing a big difference. Talking about meat in my journey in health and well-being, I read that it takes three full days for your body to completely digest and process red meat. So the thing is, if people have some red meat sausages for breakfast, right. then they have a hamburger for lunch, and then they have a steak for dinner, and then maybe the next day they have some more red meat. This is really, really taxing for your digestive system. It must be. And we talked about that that's part of the oxidization process. That's part of your your scorecard. Right. And so if you're taxing your bowels and your, your digestion with too much red meat, this can also have implications on the rest of your body. It's just to remember that if you have any red meat and the serving should not be any bigger than the palm of your hand. Palm of your hand. The palm of your hand. Just remember it takes three days for your body to digest it. So if I do have some some beef or if I have some lamb, then I won't eat any red meat for three days. And I'll even be on the safe side and I won't have it for four days. Interesting. So in our menu plan here, we rotate our protein. Like we might have eggs for dinner one day. Another day we'll have some beans. Next day we'll have maybe some tofu. Next day some chicken. The next day some more beans or lentils. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next day we'll have some fish, etc. We'll just rotate like that. We don't eat that much red meat. Well, there you can get organic cuts of red meat. For the most part, we don't really eat that much. I only eat it for a special occasion. While we're experiencing this global crisis mm -hmm. and the uncertainty of the future, it's really important to also remember that the foods you eat can help contribute to your anxiety, 
or the foods can also help you calm down. But the foods that can trigger feelings of anxiety and affect your nervous system are da da sugar, right? Deep fried foods, alcohol, and excess caffeine. And foods that can help relieve stress are beans and legumes. Going back to Daniel, see, he had to keep his cool and he knew exactly what he needed to eat. He was a prisoner in this country. It was all new for him. He was in uncharted territory. So he was very mindful of what he had to eat to help keep close to the Lord and keep it together. Uh huh. Anyway, back to the foods that help relieve stress beans and legumes, plain yogurt, avocados, and other foods that are rich in vitamin B, seafood, and dark leafy greens, and also whole grains. Kathy, briefly, what about fruits? You haven't talked about fruits at all. I know some people think that eating lots of fruits is very good for you or drinking a lot of fruit juices. What do you have to say about fruits? Well, yes, fruits are very important. I'm of the mindset that it's better to eat pieces of fruit rather than drink fruit juices. Because when you eat the fruit, you benefit from the fiber. And it's better to have more vegetables than fruit because fruit does contain sugar. Although it, it contains the good sugars, not the simple sugars that are in baked goods and in candies and in ice cream. But fruit is good. For me personally, I major on vegetables, but I also have a fruit. I have an apple, a kiwi fruit pretty much every day. Right now, the strawberries are in season, and strawberries are super good for you. Okay. But definitely fruits. Oh. Definitely fruits. I don't drink fruit juices. I don't drink those. And would you recommend raw vegetables rather than cooking them? I know some people are really, and they swear by the raw food diet, only eating raw vegetables. I do have salads. I'm really big on salads when when it's the season for salads.、Mm -hmm. And my vegetables, I usually have them a little bit al dente, except when I have soups. Then of course they're all cooked. But I would say that I mix it up quite a bit. I do raw, I do sauteed, and I do soups. I just don't stick to one thing. It's all about listening to your body. How is it setting with you? How is your tummy communicating with you? It's quite a pleasant night when listening to Nightlight. Kathy, we're running out of time on this show, but really, this is just to whet the appetite of our listeners to go online to Amazon and buy this great book, "Look and Feel: Ten Years Younger in the Next Ten Days." You can only scratch the surface on this program, but before we sign out, maybe you could tell us something about the importance of sleep. Sleep, absolutely. Having good sleep is key to your overall health and well-being, because while you're sleeping. Miraculous chemical processes are taking place to help your brain and your body be restored and refreshed. Wow! I bet Jesus knew the power of sleep, and he wasn't about to let that storm rob him of it. He was in the back of the boat with his pillow sleeping. His disciples came and woke him up, so he got up, went out there, calmed the waters, taught them their faith lesson. And then I imagine that he took his pillow, went to the back of the boat, and told them, "Wake me up when we get there." <laughs> a good eight hours of sleep will do you wonders. Amen. I read about a novel idea once about this one fellow who used an alarm clock. No, not an alarm clock to wake him up in the morning. He used the alarm clock to go off to tell him to go to sleep. <laughs> Here I've gleaned a few tips here on sleep that I'd like to share with you. Okay. Within the brain, sleep enriches our ability to learn, memorize, and make logical decisions and choices. Sleep recalibrates our emotional brain circuits, allowing us to engage each day with fewer mood swings and emotional reactiveness.、Mm -hmm. This is a good one. Sleep restocks the immune system. Peaceful sleep maintains a flourishing microbe within your gut, and adequate sleep is tied to cardiovascular fitness, 
lowering blood pressure while keeping our hearts in good condition. So have a good night's sleep. You're right. It's night light. It's really important, I feel, to make a list of your personal weaknesses concerning diet and well-being. And next to each one, write down a positive overcoming action step that you promise to commit to. It's super important to be honest with yourself. Chapter 3 tackles the importance of attitude and mindset with a major focus on the debilitating effects of negativity and the joys of positivity and being thankful. If you are thankful for your precious being, for the amazing and fantastic you that only you are, then this acknowledgement and thankfulness will spill over into taking better care of yourself. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with money for spas, salons, treatments, etc. It's all about allowing a positive attitude and mindset to have a huge impact on your life, listening to the right voices and making the right choices. This will result in a glowing countenance which can never be matched by the most expensive face cream in the world. You're with Nightlight. Kathy, thanks so much for all you shared. Maybe you could give one more plug for your book, and I think you also have a Facebook page. It's called Celebrating Wellbeing. It would really be great to see you there. And one more plug for your book. Okay, so you can check out my book on Amazon, Look and Feel 10 Years Younger in the Next 10 Days, Affordable Secrets for Natural Beauty and Healthy Energy. What I'd also like to add is this book, just because it has a female picture on the cover, doesn't mean it's just for girls. It's for guys, too. Absolutely. Kathy, thanks so much. God bless you and Peter. And we look forward to having you back on the show very soon. That's it for me for now. I pray that Kathy's health tips will inspire you to take good care of your physical health. Until next time, this is Chris Glynn signing off, and I'll be back again very soon for another international Nightlight podcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.